FJ Cruiser with the V8 swap is getting a new fuel pump today. Now this is just another cheapo that I bought. Um, and the problem with the cheap ones, and they're all pretty much the same, you can pay $65 for it online or you can pay uh, 200 for it online. But there, if you wanna zoom in on whatever one you're gonna buy and look and see if the PCB looks just like this for the fuel sending unit with the little resistor strips, if it looks exactly like that, then you know you got one of the cheapo ones, okay? Because Toyota doesn't sell this whole assembly as one. They're just gonna sell you the fuel pump, which is in there, to replace into the current module that you have. Now, um, this looks different from a regular FJ in only one way. Um, it's this uh, fuel pressure sensor, which is in the top, but other than that, everything else is the same for the GX470 4Runner V8 versus the FJ. Well, there is one minor difference. Um, when you push this down, um, it doesn't go quite, the FJ one is a little shorter. So, um, actually it gets me thinking, I wonder if either of the fuel lines got kind of crimped since I had to push it down so far. Hopefully not. But anyways, um, this one's not running anymore. Uh, so it's getting, it's 12 volts that it needs, but it's not running. So the way to get this out, um, the biggest pain is this uh, spinny wheel here. And you have to get that out. You can either go through by the tire and use a long bar like this and kind of knock at it sideways. But I found a way, well, hold on a second, I forgot. The most important part of this video is that we're going through here, took out the back seat. We're going through here instead of dropping the tank and going around. Um, so, I had done this before, so I forgot. It was different than most people will encounter. I had uh, cut out some lines here so I could bend back this metal and pull up the, the wiring here. And then I can do the whole thing from right here. And that's kind of the point of this video. So now we're gonna unscrew this. So I need to uh, use this as a prying point and get that twisted. Do you see how that came loose? Sorry for shaking the camera. And you might have to also try over here a little and over here and a little bit around the edges until you finally get it. I've taken this off a few times trying to fix my fuel gauge reading problem. So mine's already loose. So now we can get to the fun part, which is getting some drippy fuel on our hands. So see how that popped up? It's spring loaded. These will be your second biggest pain is just kind of getting these things out of the way while you pull this up on um, the wiring can kind of bend it back there and make sure everything's disconnected. And I had these little clips which held the fuel lines on, fuel line and return line. So now we're gonna pull it up and since you've got kind of some crap, you know, and this isn't, you can't bend this part back any further because there's a kind of a strength beam here, um, U-channel welded on. So you're more trying to get it diagonal out. And uh, the one problem being this little guy here, he gets caught on everything. So that's what we wanna be careful of. Kind of twist him in a way to get that up and out. So I'm gonna take this out. And we're gonna get this guy out. And you might wanna lay some, some cloths or you know some rags or something so you don't get gas in your nice, perfect little FG. Mine's not anything like that so I don't give a cramp so I'm gonna see what I got to do to work this out okay it's got to come this way and see now there's the little uh, float there I'm gonna let some drip back down in there you can see from that shadow there that there's still a bunch of gas in here so I'll let some of that drip out and don't be smoking while you're doing this job it goes without saying some people even would, uh, of course, recommend to turn off the, disconnect the, the battery. So you don't get any sparks or anything. Gas is expensive, so I'm just letting this drip back down in. All right, enough that I won't spill too much here. I'm gonna bring this out now. Put it out here. And this, I actually had transferred the sending unit from uh, the real Toyota FJ. Um, so that's what it's supposed to look like. See those four dots over there 
and so forth. That's what the sending unit is supposed to look like. This is the aftermarket one, piece of crap. And the reason it's crappy is really because of these little fingers in here that touch. They get bent outwards and then they don't send you your signal anymore. Okay, so now I'm gonna fit this guy back in here more gently than I took the other one out because he's my brand new baby. And got to fit in. And see, now we're talking about, I was telling you about these guys being a pain. They're trying to get in the way and block him. Okay, so I got him in there. Easy does it. And then um, he likes to be positioned in an exact way. And you'll see there's a little pokey oak. Little features that determine alignment are called pokey oak features in engineering when we do our design. And you can see there's a little notch space down in there and there's a notch there. So when I press this down and put that um, spin ring on, those need to be lined up like that, just perfectly. Okay. So now I'm gonna take this, pop it in, uh, put these things back together and then we'll give the car a start.